Hello YouTubers, in this video I am going to attempt to repair this uh, snowblower chute for my uh, uh, snowblower on the garden tractor. As you can see over the years, the uh, worm gear that rides in these um, grooves has worn them out pretty badly. As you can see, they are all chewed up and they're actually much shorter than they should be. I think this should be the uh, diameter, basically, uh, the other diameter of this thing, and instead it's much shorter. So <clears throat> it's only a matter of time when it's uh, obviously snowing and it's packed with ice that uh, eventually this thing doesn't turn anymore and then I'm stuck in the middle of the driveway. So let me just show you how this uh, works out. Well, as you know, this is basically mounted right here, like that. And these tabs are underneath, uh, bolted underneath there. And they basically, with this little lip, they hold it onto the lip that's over here, just like that. Uh, you notice also that this one is broken. So I'm gonna 3D printing this guy. And the ideal thing to do would be to build this ring at least um, as long as the um, uh, sort of these grooves are located uh, out of metal. But that's um, quite a bit of work. So what I'm going to try to do, I mean, this one lasted, um, I've had this tractor since 2004. Um, so it lasted over 15 years. Um, so I think that if I print it out of PLA and basically add a rim uh, sitting on top of this that bolts through these uh, existing holes, this should last quite a long time. Uh, this one I'm just noticing that's going to be close. So uh, maybe I will print one piece right here. Uh, well, I'll, tr I'll print the whole thing in one piece and then if I have to, I can just break it up over here. One tooth isn't gonna be the end of the world. Or maybe I'll just cut this, make it go underneath and then kind of uh, epoxy it back together or something. Uh, I think that over the years I have uh, uh, kind of ground it up a little bit to make it work a little bit better. Um, but, um, it's, um, again, I think it's time to start paying attention to this guy. Uh, so you can go back and look at some of my previous videos. Uh, this is actually motorized, uh, the, uh, turn left and right, as well as the up and down, uh, through that linear actuator. And you've seen this control before that allows me to do, um, up, down on the, uh, track on the entire snow lower uh, and then left and right for the shoot direction and then up and down for the uh, uh, For the shoot again uh, How far it goes and this is the linear actuator that uh, brings the entire thing up and down these guys these linear actuators are awesome I've bought them over the years. They are I paid anywhere between two hundred and fifty dollars and three hundred bucks but um, like I said, I've had them for a number of years. There's another one mounted underneath. Again, you can go back and look at my previous uh, video. Here it is. Uh, and that one actually actuates the uh, mower deck up and down using the same uh, controls up on the dash in the summertime. So uh, these cables right here, um, these cables get unplugged in the summertime and they and they remain inside under the hood. This whole thing comes out, and then these cables actually connect to another set of cables that's under the hood. I can't really open them that much. Again, you must have seen these videos before. Uh, if not, go back and look at them, search in my channel. Uh, but basically it plugs right there and right there, that white plug and the uh, red and blue plug, and that gives me power, um, again, control uh, on these guys through some additional connectors that are right there. Here's one of them sticking out actually. Uh, so that one is uh, a spare, and then there is another one that's already connected to the one underneath for the mower deck. So basically, no more levers. I mean, it's it's been awesome. Um, and uh, just because there's no, uh, no rhyme or reason, it worked just as well with the levers, but uh, I have to say the levers were a pain in the butt, especially to reach the snowblower, you kind of have to get up the seat, and then of course, as you know, there's a switch under the seat that shuts off the engine, so the thing starts going up and down, I mean, it's just a mess. Uh, this way, from inside the, um, the cab, I, I do have a soft cab that goes over the whole thing, um, you know, it allows me to control everything in, this, in the winter time, and then in the summertime, I use it for, you know, the mowing deck, uh, I have a cable that I can use as an attachment, and I use it for my um, um, uh, cedar that 
goes to the front, the spreader, uh, electric, 12 volts uh, from an ATV uh, uh, get, um, mount. And then in the back, I have a, uh, a hitch that I can use, uh, a three-point hitch that I can use, a sleeve hitch rather, that I can use to uh, attach things in the back. Like uh, I do have a plow that goes in the back. I have a plow, uh, a scooper plow that goes in the front with a uh, clamshell um, opening that allows me to dump. So again, I, I have videos on all this stuff. So um, anyways, this is um, the drawing for the uh, shoot. Uh, basically, I'm going to try to find the center with a compass and uh, draw a circle so I know what the diameter is. And then I'm going to approximate where these guys are um and just print you know um a template uh like a millimeter thick uh, template just to see if it matches if i can put it up against the other uh, snow blower itself uh and see if that works also like i said i'm going to print one of these uh, uh guys right here one of these blocks so i took some measurements it's basically four millimeters thick right here and it's eight millimeters uh, thick on, on this side and so again find the radius uh, from here to here something with a compass once i know what the radius is then i can reproduce that in uh, tinkercad and uh, go from there so that's going to be the next thing is design these two uh, uh, objects and uh, print a uh, test do a test print uh, nice and thin so that it doesn't take too much time it doesn't waste too much material just to see how they fit and then i'll go from there So here is the template, uh, 3D printed. Uh, actually, I'm gonna be using PTG uh, instead of PLA, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, and as you can see, this fits pretty damn well. Um, all of the uh, slots line up, the diameter lines up. It needs to be a little bit wider. Uh, so it's gonna be 32 millimeters wide so that it can uh, grab those uh, uh, bolt holes right there. And um, now it's just going to be a matter of printing uh, the whole thing. I cannot print the entire ring uh, because my uh, print bed isn't big enough. So uh, that's okay. I'm going to be printing sections. Uh, probably I'll split this up into uh, three sections that I uh, that allows me to use these uh, holes that are uh, around the uh, the perimeter here. And um, I might also uh, epoxy it down to here because I'm afraid that if it's not, you know, it, uh, the uh, the holes, uh, the bolt holes here will not apply enough pressure in areas like these that are away from the from the from the bolts. So I'll probably end up epoxying it down. Um, so I'm gonna figure out now how many sections I want and uh, uh, split up the, the the design. Right now I designed it all as one piece. I uh, just have to section it off and uh, print each section. Hello, welcome back. All right, so all the parts have been 3D printed. Um, uh, as I mentioned, my print bed isn't big enough, so I printed it in three sections, one, two, and three. And uh, I have drilled the holes. I did not um, engineer the holes into the design to begin with because I wasn't sure the exact location. So I basically just uh, put the parts over the, the chute here, clamped it together with some spring clamps and then I'll just simply drill the holes. Uh, not the best approach because obviously there are no walls uh, on the uh, around the holes. So if you compress it too much, uh, I printed it with 50% infill. If you compress a little bit too much, then it does squish down. Squish down. Uh, but I don't think it's a big deal. At the end of the day, as long as they don't move side to side, it'll be fine. Uh, as you recall, uh, one of these cleats that mounts on the bottom uh, where the holes are, um, was broken so I was gonna print one of these and then I figured hey why not just print the entire uh, diameter again so here it is again printed in three sections uh, these sections uh, and once again no holes uh, I'm just gonna drill those right into uh, uh, into this uh, as I put them onto the tractor and um, this one now I printed it in such a way so that there is a, a different kind of overlap so it's gonna overlap over here and this one is going to overlap over there so it'll grab this hole and that hole and then the one in the back will grab that hole over there and we'll come all the way around to this hole so there'll be uh so there's there's some overlap um so um so that's it so now i'm gonna uh put this onto the track tool and i'm gonna drill it in place so that way it's a snug fit 
um, uh, around the diameter of the of the opening, and then um, hopefully my bolts are big enough. I don't have any bolts uh, longer than this, so these are going to have to do. Hopefully, otherwise it's going to be on the trip to the hardware store. So I'm going to put it together and show you what it looks like. Well, the snowshoe is back in place. As you can see, the top and bottom rings are in place, bolted down. I only drilled one extra hole right here, only because this one here is uh, not exactly solid with the rest of it. So I needed something so that it doesn't, you know, uh, slide out. Um, so not the strongest, obviously, um, piece right there, but uh, there is another on the bottom. And at the end of the day, the original uh, grooves there are still there, right? So even if, uh, the uh the one i printed was to wear out which uh this one already seems like it's uh, uh curved a little bit there uh the bottom one is still going to be there so it's all back in place i will show you how it spins Oops. A little is probably not uh, fully charged right now tractor hasn't been on for about two weeks now a uh, little squeaky like I said uh, it wasn't doing that at the very beginning now it started doing it so maybe it just needs to kind of wear itself in uh, I might spray it with some WD-40 or lithium grease perhaps um, but, um, I'm just gonna let it wear out wear in rather and as you can see it goes all the way to the end and it stops I do have and the run switches right there that this lever actuates so uh, i'm going to call this project done and um, if anything again this is a little extra insurance with uh, uh, the uh, original shoot uh, grooves uh, wearing out too much so uh, hopefully this will work and, and by the way the reason why i ended up doing a full ring on the bottom uh, it was supported only in three spots i figured it's going to be better balanced because it has support all the way around the rim um, it seems to work fine and uh, so I'm gonna call this done um, fun project to do and uh, good luck with yours